Father, bless us now as we study the word of the Lord together. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope we shout, but if we don't, just remember you shouted last Sunday. One of the blessings of being poverty of spirit, poor in spirit, poverty, and when we study the word poor, the word poor is not working poor. It's not the poor who are the working poor, who can't miss a day, can't miss a paycheck. You know, they have to work several jobs to satisfy that poverty. They make the minimum wage or whatever. That's not the poor that he's talking about. That poor person, that poor is too rich for what Jesus is describing. Jesus is describing poverty, poor, to the point where you depend on the charity of others. Poor, where you can't satisfy your poverty. Welfare, poor. Help me, poor. That kind of poor. He's not talking about financial poverty, but that level, that, that opinion of ourselves when it comes to salvation, when it comes to, to, to being a member of the kingdom of God. This is hard to hear because when, when, you, when I'm preaching to people, and, and, and please take this the, the, the right way, the way that I mean it, mean it, because of the way the gospel is preached today, I'm basically preaching to people and people who are watching, who are streaming, we're preaching to people who are basically full of themselves. Amen. And we just, we're, we're it. If you don't believe that we're it, just ask us. Praise the Lord. We, our opinion of ourselves is much too high. If you, if you want, if you want to, one of the cardinal sins today, and you hear it all often, people say, well, so-and-so disrespected me. Like you're above being disrespected. Uh, we, we, we are angry. We get angry at the drop of the hat. Our, our opinion of ourselves is, is, is too high. And Jesus says, in order to walk into the kingdom of God, you, you've got to change that. You've got to downshift a little. Poverty of spirit keeps one from becoming morally bankrupt. Poverty of spirit causes us to see ourselves in the proper light. Amen. Poverty of spirit prevents self-centeredness. Believe it or not, the world doesn't revolve around us. The world revolves around the Lord. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwelleth therein. So sometimes the Lord, the way the rest of the world works, sometimes you got to wait. Sometimes I've got to wait. Sometimes you can't get what you want when you want it. And the Lord expects us to be adults about it. Amen. Um, poverty of spirit will keep one from losing their legitimate privileges. There are legitimate privileges that the Lord has for all of us. But you know, you can almost, you, you, you can let an opinion of yourself be so high that it will cause you to participate in certain actions that will cost you that which is rightly yours. You lose all those things because you're overreaching. I'm going to struggle today. What the Lord is actually saying is more of me. This is what he's saying to us up around. More of me and less of thee. Perhaps more of me and none of thee. But the Lord is saying that we've got to increase our relationship with him. Praise the Lord. Uh, by the way, uh, Brother Thomas, I saw you on the way to church today, and that was a very classy move. I saw you. God bless you. Very classy. The Apostle Paul uh, said it this way. In Romans 12 and 3, the Apostle says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is in, among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, 
but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. That is, do not overvalue your abilities. Value your abilities. Value them, but do not overvalue them. Amen. For God has given to every man the measure of faith. That is, the Lord has given every one of us faith uh, for our particular task. But you don't want to overvalue it. Never think that it can't be done if you don't do it. Never think that if you quit, God's purpose still won't be fulfilled. That's overvaluing your contribution. Amen. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, the apostle Paul says this. He warns against being overconfident. He says, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. He warns those of us who think that we got it locked. I'm saved and there are certain things that just can't happen to me. There are certain, I'm not going to fall. It's as good as over. I'm it. He said, let him that thinketh. He standeth, that is, let the person who continue to think that he will never uh, fall, says, says, be careful of that measure of overconfidence, lest you fall. For the person who believes that they got it all locked up, lock, stock, and barrel are people who won't pray as they ought. They won't fast as they ought. They won't read the Bible as they ought. They won't attend service as they ought. They won't even hear preaching as they ought should hear it because after all while the preacher is preaching he can't be talking to me I'm, I wish so and so was here to hear it today because if they heard it it would encourage them because after all I already know all that stuff because I, I'm, I'm there none of us are there we're all works in progress amen no passage of scripture is above beneath you well, I'm going to preach today from the 23rd Psalm what Psalm 23 I reject that response to Psalms 23. Oh, I'm going to preach today about Daniel in the lion's den. Oh, I know Daniel in the lion's den. Let me tell you something. No, you don't. No, you don't. One of the greatest act of, acts of courage in all of Scripture was Daniel and what he did to end up in that den of lions and how the God of the Bible uh, kept him in the midst of hungry lions. If you know anything about a hungry lion, you know that it was a divine miracle. And then one of the greatest, greatest scriptures in all of, uh, of the Bible where the king got up, lost his sleep that night, got up first thing the next morning, cried out into the den of lions and said, Oh, Daniel, was your God able to keep you through the night? And then the Bible says this, Then said Daniel. <laughs> then said Daniel. Through some of your toughest trials, when the trial is over, then said Ronnie, then said Emmanuel. That means, yes, God kept me. And brought me out. Oh, my. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. In a rare moment of nobility, and I mean rare. King Ahab, when threatened by King Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, and Ben-Hadad had 32 kings lined up with him to go against, to come up against King Ahab. And he said to King Ahab, he said, listen, everything you got is mine. Your silver is mine. Your gold is mine. Whatever you have is mine. And so the King Ahab being the coward that he was, and an appeaser, if there's ever been one. He didn't fight. He sent word back and said to Ben Haddad, well, okay, well, you know, I'll give you all the silver, I'll give you all the gold, I'll give you everything you ask for. Then Ben Haddad says, all right, well, now that you're going to, if that's your foreign policy, well, I want everything out. Then Ahab went to some leaders and talked with them, and, they, and, and Ahab uh, got some courage, and he said this, concerning the overconfidence of King Ben-Hadad. First Kings chapter 20, verse 11. Then the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off. That is, let not the man who is getting ready to go out and fight boast like he's already fought, won the battle, and have come home victorious. 
See, you have to, you have to, you have to have, you know, confidence is one thing, but don't talk like it's done. None of us are in heaven already. None of us have a halo over our heads. None of us have actually moved into that mansion. So, and, and, and when you're going through, a measure of caution is wise. I don't even need to pray about certain things. No, no, no. The very thing you, that you say you don't need to pray about, that's the thing you better pray about. Because that's the area where the, where the devil can throw you because you're going in overconfident. I watched a boxing match last night for, where the reigning champ hit a contender. He hit him in the first round and almost took him out. After the, after the match was over, the contender came back and won. He said, he said what happened was, he says, when I got hit uh, in the first round, he says, uh, it says, it took away my overconfidence. I realized then, now I got to apply myself and fight like I got some sense because the guy hurt me. And, and then when he regrouped, the, the, he, he turned, in, in, ended up knocking the champ out. Knocked him out. Isn't that something? Be, be careful when you're going out to battle that you don't talk like someone who has just, who have already won. In other words, uh, be poor in spirit. The prophet Samuel said this to Saul, and Samuel said unto him, this is in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 17, Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own sight. When you were little in thine own sight, wast thou not made head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. When your opinion of yourself was proper, when you were small in your own sight, when you were not a legend in your own mind, God anointed you king over Israel. The key here is little in thine own sight. Oh, it is so important that we understand the importance of being poor in spirit. God is saying to every one of us, we got to take it down a notch. Some of us, a whole bunch of notches. Poor in spirit. The Bible tells us of a story of a great king. Tells the story, excuse me, of a great king who prospered big time. I mean everything in this man's plan worked. Everything he, uh, I, I mean, he, he was almost a king who could do no wrong. Everything worked. Uh, the Bible tells us that the reason for his work, his success was, and the scriptures are clear on this, it says God helped him and blessed him. And, and the Lord helped him and marvelously blessed this king as long as the king was poor in spirit. As long as in his spirit, that is, you know, we talked about spirit, pneuma, that vertical relationship. The, the spirit of a man is the vertical relationship that man has with God. We, we communicate with God uh, from our spirit. And, and, uh, and that spirit, the, the, because human beings have a spirit, human beings can think on God and communicate with God. Animals do not have a spirit. Animals have a soul. Suke. They have vertical relationship. The, the, the dog loves his master, but the dog can't pray. You know, the dog can't go on a fast. You know, human beings have both spirits and souls. We have vertical, the vertical relationship with God and, and the horizontal relationship with one another. And, and for the horizontal relationship to be right, we've got to get the vertical right. And so uh, when the vertical is right, it causes us to see the Lord uh, a certain way. You know, as long as this king uh, saw himself as being small and compared to the Lord. You know, I know that the Bible teaches that uh, when, the, when the 12 spies went into the land of Canaan, they saw giants over there. And they said, we see ourselves as grasshoppers. Well, that, well, well, they shouldn't have saw themselves as grasshoppers in comparison to those giants. But, but they should see themselves as grasshoppers in comparison to God. You should never see, let the devil show you anything that would cause you to doubt God's ability to deliver you. For the ability of the Lord is superior to anything that Satan brings your way. Amen. 
You find out from the doctor that you have a condition. That condition will shake you when you first hear it. But that condition ought not, be, ought not to be stronger in your mind than the name Jesus and the Lord's ability to deliver. Are you listening to me? He is the healer. He is the deliverer. And you got to see it correctly. Are you with me? As long as he saw himself as insignificant, this king, God used him. The Bible says two things that are very important about this king. Number one, it says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. What a powerful thing. But it says something else. There as far as east is from the west. It says, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted to his own destruction. Praise the Lord. Remember the last time we studied this subject, the Bible says, for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, but he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. The word abased comes from a definition to is things will happen to you that will cause you to see that you are a mere human. The devil has a way of trying to make you think that you're superhuman, but none of us are superhuman. The devil has a way of trying to make you think that you have an edge that no one else, no one else has. But let me tell you, you, none of us are superhuman. And life can bring you down. Life can bring you down. See, some of us, we don't know how to, how to handle being blessed. We don't know how to handle uh, 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 success. And, and, and one of the reasons that we fail with success especially in the African-American community, we have, we have become experts at dealing with poverty. Most of our sermons and most of the things we study, we've become, because we've had to, we, we've become, uh, we, we're experts at knowing how to take a little and make it a lot. We're experts at knowing how to move things around. Experts at knowing how to put off this bill so we can pay that bill. You know, operating with less. But you know what happens? We're not good at being with operating in abundance. We don't do well when the Lord bless us. Oh, good things happen. Praise the Lord. Many of us can't handle success well. Success goes to our head. But that's because in many uh, cases we weren't trained to deal with uh, uh, success. We've been trained to deal with lack. But let me say to you, uh, success can destroy you uh, just as quickly, if not, if not quicker, than poverty will. Solomon said in Proverbs 30, 8 through 9, he says, Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is, who is the Lord? or lest I be poor and steal and take your name in vain. Both extremes have their disadvantages. I want to talk to you about a man whom the Lord blessed. He, as long as he was poor in spirit, in the moment God made him strong, hear me today, it became his destruction. Are you with me? Second Chronicles chapter 26. Second Chronicles chapter 26. Do you have it? Say amen. Now, 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Then all the people of Judah, verse 1, took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, interestingly enough, and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. Uzziah, Uzziah was his uh, throne name. His birth name was Azariah. Uzziah means Yahweh is my strength. 
Azariah means Yahweh helps. When you read uh, uh, 2 Kings chapter 14, you see that uh, Uzziah and uh, Azariah here is the same uh, king. All right? And, and once Uzziah was made king, and it's interesting, Uzziah reigned uh, during the same time of Jeroboam II. And it was an interesting time for the nation of Israel. This is just a tidbit for, for good Bible students. Uh, uh, both the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom during this time uh, were very abundantly blessed. Jeroboam II had a, a super uh, run, as did Uzziah, and the economy of both were doing quite well. When Uzziah became, and by the way, this is the same Uzziah, well, that Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. So this is King Uzziah uh, becoming king at 16 years of age. And, uh, and, and I want to give you, just read some of, some of his accomplishments. One of the things that this mighty king did was he built uh, Eloth, or Eloth, uh, and restored it to Judah after the after that, the king slept with his father. After his dad died, there was a place called uh, Eloth, which was um, uh, built by Solomon. You can study this in 1 Kings chapter 9. It was near the Red Sea next to Ezon Gerber, where the navy of Judah was. And one of the first things that Uzziah did was he restored the power of the military. Put the navy, because you, you, you got to have a strong defense if you're going to have a country. Say amen. So he restored uh, the military. And uh, then we're given a, a word of caution in verse 4. It says, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But listen to this, according to his father, Amaziah did. According to what his father did. And the one thing, the one drawback of his dad was his dad left the high places. He was a godly man, but he left uh, monuments to false gods in place. Well, Uzziah uh, served the Lord, and, but he, he, he left these, these false gods in place. Are you following me? And then something happened to Uzziah that kind of handicapped him. And I need you to, if you love the scriptures, you'll love this. The Bible says, and verse 5, And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. This was not the prophet Zechariah who wrote the book that bared his name. But this was a man, a godly counselor, who had the understanding of God. He understood God, uh, had an had a unparalleled understanding. He was a counselor to Uzziah, an awesome leader, but the man died. So you need a good spiritual leader, a godly person speaking in your life. AA, you have people out there practicing sports at 11 o'clock. On Sunday morning, playing soccer, dodgeball, basketball. I, I hate that. I hate that. And I say to any believer, if the believers, if the families of the believers would just rebel and say, we're not going to let our children uh, disrespect God on Sunday morning. With our children, I, I don't care if he's 15 years old and he's seven feet tall. Well, he's going to go to church. It would make a difference. And there you are out there teaching your child by letting them participate that there is something more important than worship. You need to place, I'm not giving any amens now, you need to place value on hearing from God because your child is going to need the Lord. There's a, there's a whole lot of women and men who didn't, who didn't get turned out until they made pro. Didn't become, uh, they didn't become drug addicts till they made it to the NFL or the NBA. That's not a panacea. panacea. People need Jesus. People need, our children need to be taught by how we raise them. The importance of worship. I 
I believe, I understand homework. And homework wasn't just invented when your child got homework. They've always had homework, but we've always had weeknight church too. We hadn't been to church on a Thursday night uh, since Thursday nights were invented. Well, you can't come because they have so much homework. You are sending the wrong message. Now, you raise your children any way you want to, but I'm telling you, you, if you want them to see God as a priority, you have to make God a priority. And we raise them, we speak more by what we allow them to do than by what we say. His counselor died. This man had vision. He taught uh, Uzziah who God is. And look at what's said about Uzziah. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. That is true for every one of us. As long as we seek the Lord, put the Lord in his proper place. Preach wouldn't. Amen. Lift the Lord up as God. As long as we seek the Lord, God will prosper us. That is, as long as he sought God's hand, as long as he sought God's will, as long as he sought God's mind, as long as he sought the Lord's guidance, as long as he sought God's protection, as long as he obeyed the Lord, as long as he worshiped the Lord, as long as he humbled himself to the will of God, God made him to prosper. Parents, 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 you got to put God first. You got to put God first. If you seek the Lord, the Lord will bless you. Business owners, put God first. Uzziah well, was a political leader. He was a king, but the king who sought the Lord was prospered by God. And if you study verse oh, verse six and down through verse fifteen, you will see that everything he did. He, everywhere, everywhere Uzziah turned, he was blessed. He was blessed militarily. He was blessed uh, agriculturally. The economy exploded under his leadership. He was blessed. He, he, he warred successfully against the Philistines and against the Amorites. And he increased Judah's defenses. He assembled an elite army. He built up a powerful army and he equipped the army. He also built cities and encouraged agricultural development. And then he, he created devices, catapults, and different uh, uh, instruments of war and, and that, he, that, he, uh, uh, that he put on the wall of Jerusalem. He, he built a wall. Uh, you can't blame me for preaching the Bible. Say amen. You can't blame me for, for, for preaching the Bible. See, he built the wall. And then, well, there, then, then he fortified the wall and put, and put weapons on top of the wall so that the city would be safe and that the inhabitants of the city would be safe. And God marvelously blessed him. Somebody say marvelously. Marvelously. The Lord marvelously blessed him. And I mean, if you read verse 6 down and down, I won't do it because of time, but you will see battle after battle he was winning. You will see where Israel's enemies, their sworn enemies, the Ammonites, gave, gave, they paid taxes. They paid tributes to Uzziah. And he built everything up all the way down to Egypt. And he exceedingly, look at, look at this, he strengthened, verse 8, the last clause, himself exceedingly. He fortified his, his, his country. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gates and, and towers at the valley gates. He fortified them. Oh, man, this guy was something. He did all these things. I want to show you something. Verse 15 says, and he made in Jerusalem Engines, that means skillful devices, weapons of war. He invented engines, invented by cunning men to be on the towers and uh, upon the bulwarks uh, to shoot arrows and great stones. These catapults would stop the enemy from coming. Look at this. And with 
many, and look at this, and his name spread abroad. For he was marvelously helped. Marvelously helped there literally means he was supernaturally helped. Let me tell you something. When you walk into uh, poverty of spirit, the Lord will supernaturally help you. He'll make things work for you that you will say to yourself, that's got to be God. The only way I can explain it is it had to be the Lord working on my side. That condition would have killed me, but God marvelously helped me. When I got laid off, I, the reason I didn't lose my house or anything, matter of fact, you didn't even know that I didn't have a job because God marvelously helped me. When my enemies came against me and tried to destroy me, they praise the Lord, I beat them all. Why? Because God marvelously helped me. Somebody shout marvelously. He will marvelously help you if you stay humble and seek the Lord. I don't advise you to jump on anybody whom God is marvelously blessing. No one has ever gotten rich betting against someone whom God is marvelously blessing. For when the Lord begins to marvelously bless, the devil has to stand back. Satan can't win. The, the, the Philistines, the Amorites, and all the rest of them, Ike and Tina, turn, all of them got to run when the Lord marvelously help you. How many know today that you have a secret weapon? I have a silent partner on my side, and it's the Lord God Almighty. Don't stand back and get jealous. No point in trying to judge me because I'm blessed. No point in trying to talk about me because things seem to work out. I'm marvelously helped. But, but, I, but you're not marvelously helped because of your last name. You're not marvelously helped because of who your mama and daddy, uh, who your parents are. You're not marvelously helped because of your skin color. This marvelously help comes from seeking the Lord and viewing yourself as being insignificant and you are able to tell the world when they say, how do you do it? You are able to say from your heart, it's the Lord's doing. The Bible says, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. He, he was marvelously helped. Marvelously helped. Marvelously helped. Marvelously helped. Help. Hey. Until he was strong. Until he was strong. Until he was strong. Until he was strong. I wish I could keep going marvelously help, but it's until he was strong. I, you were ready to take off and shout on marvelously help, but the problem is until he was strong. Until he got that contract. Until they got that promotion. Until you got that job. Until you got that spouse until you got a little fame until you arrive until he was strong oh god oh now get ready to lose the house again see i tried to warm it up for you <laughs> now nah. If, if it's too hot, we'll fix it. But y'all had it too cold. The church mothers wrapping up and all that kind of stuff. Mothers freezing. Now, see, y'all got to be, you got to think about the mothers when you adjust this. Praise the Lord. So I try to think about everybody. But now until, let me get back to this. See, now y'all got me preaching about temperature. Let me get back to this. Until he was strong. Just, just bow me a few more minutes. The Bible says, look at what the Bible says. Uh, until he was strong. That is, until there was widespread prestige. I want to talk to you somebody's in here. Position holders. Both in church and in natural. See, you, you, you got to, you listen. Listen to me now. Listen to Brother Wooden. 
You have to know how to keep things from going to your head. You better hear me. Because the Lord who takes you up will bring you down. And it's hard going down. Especially if you were ugly on your way up. If you wouldn't speak on your way up, you will get no mercy tumbling down that hill. The fame went out. Verse 16 says, but when he was successful, strong, look at this, when he was strong, when he could change clothes, he had a nice car, nice suit, articulate. Again, to look better. You know, money makes you look better. You know, to fix his hair. You know, you know it does. It affects you. Praise Lord. Got a little something to clear up your skin. Thank you, Jesus. I'm preaching good, right? Amenities that you couldn't afford before. Praise the Lord. All kinds of things. You have those things now. That's when you got to watch them. Because that's when it's so easy to say to yourself, look at who I am. Look at what I've done. Look at what I'm driving. Look at where I live. Oh, my Lord, it's me, it's me. Everybody loves me. Everybody's praising me. Everybody's calling my name. I'm getting appointments now. Can't find you on Tuesday night because you're getting appointments. Getting appointments. Some things now in the ministry is beneath you. Hey, pick up that paper. I ain't doing that. I'm an evangelist. I'm, I'm the bishop. I'm this. I, I'm, I'm head whatever. All of a sudden, they're going to demanding things. I, you know, I go, whoa. I remember one time you didn't do that. Until he was strong. Besides. Besides himself. He got beside himself. Uh, Dr. Harrison, he was no longer poor in spirit. Bible says... Uh, his, his heart was lifted to his destruction. The word destruction there, his ruin. It was lifted to his decay. For he transgressed the Lord his God. You know, if, if you study chapter 12, verse 1, you'll see he began to behave like Rehoboam. Oh, yeah, Rehoboam, after the Lord raised him up. After the Lord raised him up, praise the Lord, then he turned on God. Some people, when they were catching the bus to church, didn't miss a service. The Lord blessed them with a car. Now they go everywhere but church. There's just so many. I need to see other things. I need to do other things. The world is big, bigger than just that. It wasn't bigger than that when you were walking. It wasn't, it wasn't that big when you were catching a ride. It wasn't that big when you were broke. We had to get you off the altar so we could have the rest of the service when you were struggling. Then the Lord blessed you. Until, I told you we probably wouldn't shout. Until he was strong. Now look at this. When he was strong, his heart was lifted. He transgressed against the Lord. And here's what he did. And went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar. You know what he did? Because, listen. Just because. Now listen to me now. Listen. You who are watching. 
you're streaming. Listen. Just because God blesses you in one area, it doesn't entitle you to rule and reign in another. See, we love to redefine our job descriptions on the fly. All of a sudden, you've gone doing things that you know and no one else has done it. And you're just doing it just because to see how much you can get away with. You're behaving like Uzziah. Just because the Lord blessed him as king, that doesn't mean that the Lord made him a priest. Just because the Lord anoints you in one area doesn't mean that the Lord anoints you in every area. Praise the Lord. You got to know how to stay in your place. Stay in your lane. This is good preaching. He overstepped his authority. He went beyond the moral and religious parameters that God had given him. And listen, every one of us have to understand this. And you won't like this. But Solomon teaches this, that in all of our lives, we all can have our portion. And ain't nobody allotted everything. We all have our allotments in this world with limitations. Yeah. Right. Oprah lied when she said you can have it all. She can't have it all. She can't lose weight and keep it all. She can't have it all. Nobody can have it all. Can't get married. Nobody can have it all. Everybody's lives have limits. And you have to operate within your parameters. Praise the Lord. Let the head usher lead the usher board. You just join coming in rearranging things. Come on now. Let, praise the Lord, let, let look, let the experienced people be the experienced. Let the person who, to whom the the task is assigned to. Let them do that and you do the one that's assigned to you. And then ask God because all of us assume that we can do things that we can't. I mean, it's, 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 it's the condition of fallen man. We're all, you know, we're, 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 we're experts in our own minds. And, and so we have to ask, oh, now, Lord, help me to do that which I can do. And then that which doesn't pertain to me, Lord, help me to leave that to whom it appertains. Matter of fact, they said to him, and ah, look at this, verse 17. Are you all still with me? Just, just, just bear with me a little bit more. We're going to get out on time today because I'm hungry. Uh, I, saw my wife, I saw my wife cutting the chicken last night. So I know what's waiting for me. Now, nah, it says, and Amaziah, uh, no, 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 and Azariah, the priest. This is another Azariah. This is the priest. Went in after him, because now the king have walked into the house of the Lord, and he's gone to the altar for which he is not qualified. And he has a censer in his hand, and he's getting ready to light up the, offer, the altar and offer incense. I guess he says, you know what? If I can beat the, the, uh, if I beat the Philistines, if I beat the Amorites, if I've revived the, revived the economy, if I've done this, 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 and this, I've done all these things, I, mean, pray, well, I guess I can do this too. Since I have success in all these other areas, that means, hey, there's an altar, there's an incense, I'm the king. Why not? Well, there's a whole lot of reasons why. Number one, it doesn't appertain to you. The Bible said, uh, can I get a witness? The Bible said, uh, and they, says the, the Amaziah went in and he took 80 priests of the Lord with him. And look at this, the Bible says, and they were valiant men. The priest wasn't playing. The, the, the priest wasn't playing. You're not going to do this. See? see, 
valiant men, and they withstood Uzziah. Some people pronounce it Uzziah. Uzziah. They withstood the king and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord. That is, it is not su- appertaineth. It is not suitable for you. Not suitable. You're not qualified. But says this is but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. We have been consecrated to do this. This is why this same-sex marriage and stuff—it's not consecrated. Ain't, ain't two men that are not aren't gonna ever have a wedding in here. As long as I live, that ain't that, that ain't happening. Two women. Well, can we use your church? No. No, we have shut it down first. No, 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 no. You can't consecrate that. No, I don't care who went along with it. No politician. And that's what King Uzziah was. I've said it and I've said it for years and many of you got cold on me for saying it. No politician has the authority to go against God. It doesn't matter to me what color he is. doesn't matter to me what his name is. doesn't matter whether he looked like me or not. No man has the authority to declare right that which God says is wrong. For it does not appertain to man. And some of you who loved me stopped loving me. Because I wouldn't go along with that. And it hurt my feelings. But I stay with God anyhow. <laughs> Hurt my feelings. Wouldn't have come to church. No politician has the right to do what he Uzzi- Uzziah, a politician, who when he was poor in spirit, wouldn't have thought about it. Celia, uh, uh, it wouldn't have crossed his mind when he was poor in spirit. Because you know what he was saying when he was poor in spirit? I'm not qualified. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a king. I, I'm, I'm not a priest. One day a preacher was walking up to the president of the United States. This was years ago. And uh, the president saluted the preacher. And, uh, and uh, they asked the president when the preacher left, why did you salute that preacher? After all, You are the president of the United States. The president said to them, people make men presidents, but God make men preachers. And he understood that that he was not consecrated to be a preacher. But if you respect God's man, the Lord will bless you. So now, let me close this up. I've been preaching too long and you're getting tired of me now. But I, but the, yeah, they withstood him and told him you're not consecrated. And they said, go out of the sanctuary. For thou hast trespassed, neither, uh, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord. Says if you do this, God won't honor you. They said, get out of here. Leave, leave. And notice this. Notice how merciful God is. See, before the Lord drops the hammer, He always gives us time to repent. He always gives us time to get right. We need to repent today. Get off that high horse and repent. And instead of repenting, look at this. He's just like some of us. Instead of saying I'm wrong, instead of saying you're right, look at what happened. This is why I talk a lot about emotions. Earlier in the sermon, I talked about being poor in spirit. I didn't talk about being poor 
poor in suke, not poor in soul, that's where your emotions are, but in your spirit. See, your, your, your spirit, your mental capacity must dominate your emotions. I taught them the other day in the 8 a.m. class, and I've said this to some of the members, you are not what you feel. You are not how you feel. You may feel lousy, you may feel like it's the end of the world, but that doesn't make it true. You gotta know, you gotta know how to differentiate between what you think and how you feel. Because if you, if you be governed by how you feel, your feelings can get you destroyed because feelings don't have to be just. Feelings don't have to be reasonable. Feelings don't have to be based on anything. Feelings are just that. They are feelings. But reasoning has to be, has to be reality based. Notice what happened to him. Look what he did. And it was not legitimate. Because what they said to him was right. He had no reason to display what was displayed in verse 19. Then Uzziah was wroth. Now the question is, why? You were the one wrong. You are the one who's trying to do that which doesn't appertain to you. You're the one who you serve in authority. What are you upset about? And what he should have done. Because all of us, now let's be honest. I don't wanna, let's be honest. All of us have gotten angry when we shouldn't have. But too few of us stop and say, should I feel this way? Oh, my, is my anger just? Is my rage appropriate? Should I not be thankful that someone loved me enough Tell me the truth. Why am I behaving like a heathen? To quote Esther on Sanford and Son. You heathen. You're just a heathen. <laughs> you mean old heathen. Why am I behaving like a heathen? Why don't I get a control of myself? He should have. He should have. Especially if you're wrong. You, if you're in the wrong, husband, wife, son, dog, parent, leader, follower, if you're in the wrong, why play games to try to make it seem like, well, let me twist this around. Uh, it ain't, it ain't. No, 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 no. That, that stuff will destroy you. Because it got Uzziah killed. It got him killed. I'm taking too long. It got him killed. He died. It cost him his rightful place. He had privileges that he lost that he didn't have to lose. All he had to do was check his emotion and run back to being poor in spirit. But instead, instead, I'm the king. There's no poor in spirit in that. I'm in charge. There's no poor in spirit in that. You priests can't tell me what to do. There's all 81 of you. There's no 80 plus uh, uh, the, the chief priest. You can't tell me what to do. So look at what happens. I'm preaching too long. And he was wroth. And had a, a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priest. While he was mad with the priest. Be careful. I'm just upset with the man of God. While he was wroth with the priest. While he was wroth with the priest. The leprosy. Hansen's disease. The leprosy rose up in his forehead. Before the priest in the house of the Lord. All of a sudden standing there and his forehead turned white. Color change. And, 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 and check this out. The priest saw it. Oh my God. He looked at him. And you know, that was, you know, that, that's it. In biblical times, that was it. No treatment. No, you got to separation now. You're out. Get who you are. Leprosy, you're done. Oh my and, and you, know, you know where he lived, right? You know he lived in the palace, right? You know he was the man. He was famous. You got it, got it going on, right? Show's over. Turn out the lights. 
The party's over. Oh, it's the time to call old Dandy Don Meredith to sing the song because the show is over. The Bible teaches that leprosy hit his forehead. And, and look at this. And they thrust him out from thence. Yea, and he himself uh, also, he hastes also to go out. Now, why wouldn't he run out before the leprosy? Just, just, you know, why let, why let a thing go from bad to worse before you do right? Now, all of a sudden, I leave. <laughs> I'm leaving. No, no, no. You should have left when they told you to leave. See, you may well stay now. <laughs> I mean, you're done. Judgment have been passed. Learn from this. If God is speaking to you, learn from it. And God is speaking to you. You, you don't, you're not wondering why the Lord had me preaching this this way. See, because if I just drive it on this part, you'll miss it. And he, uh, you, go ahead. No, let me slow this down. Slow this down. I, I'll, be, I'll be back on top next Sunday. Listen, 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 listen. Now, when the, isn't it amazing? They can't give up the sin. They can't quit. They can't, oh, she can't give him up. He can't give her up. They can't, they just can't till they get caught. Then they won't, won't call each other. I mean, oh, it's just, my God, like, like a person never lived. It's amazing how you can come out after God drops the bomb. Yeah. God just won't break, he won't stop breaking the law till. No, 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 you're going, you, 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 he's going to be your mommy, all right. All I can say is, don't pick up the soap, because you're in trouble now. It's amazing. So now he runs out, and Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous. In his forehead. This is a death sentence. And they thrust him out from thence. He himself hastened also to go out because the Lord had smitten him. The Lord didn't hit him fast. The Lord gave him plenty of time to repent, but he wouldn't. And Uzziah the king, look at this, was a leper until the day of his death. And dwelt in a several house. That is, he had to leave the palace and go live in a separate house by himself. He goes from being famous to being infamous to being alone. He goes from being so alive that everybody's calling his name to death being just around the corner. While he was poor in spirit, he was a superstar. When he got filled with himself, it, he, it was to his own ruin. And, 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 and listen, listen, hear me now. If this could happen to him, you know it could happen to any of us, for none of us are kings. Amen. Uh, none of us are at the very top. Praise the Lord. Some of you who have wonderful corporate job, I'm proud of you, but somebody else is over you. Those of you who, who own your own businesses, you depend on customers. Those of us who pastor the church, we want people to come. And, and, and nobody, no one is that high. Congress called Mike Zuckerberg on the carpet the other day. And Diamond and Silk really got it. <laughs> I told him to go somewhere and sit down. No one is a mean one. He ended up, he dwelt in a house being a leper. For Look at this. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord. Now he can't go back into the temple. Look at all of the legitimate privileges that he had that he lost. All because he overstepped his boundaries. 
it can cost you. And look at what happened. He died. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping right here. I want to pray for some people now. <sighs> Help me. Help me to stay in my legitimate place. Help me to be thankful. To be confident, but not overconfident. To be appreciative and never arrogant. To be bold, but to acknowledge you. To resist the temptation to behave like an elitist. Like we live above the rules. No one's, no one is above the rules. Nobody is that special. No one. Not me. Not my wife. Not you. Not yours. Not my children. Not your children. Not my family. Not your family. No one. No one. Hallelujah. We're all subject to the law of God. Just as we're all subject to the law of nature. Certain things any of us violate in nature, we will, will, we will have a predictable outcome. Next thing you know, you got a cold. Next thing you know, you're sick. Because you went against the rules of nature. Nobody that special. It won't get you anywhere. I don't know if I'll preach poor in spirit again. But I know this. I won't move from it until the Lord moves me. This is not designed to punish us, but it's actually designed to elevate us. For I have great things for you, saith the Lord. But you have to be humble. You can't act like you're deserving. The Lord said, when you come to me, you can't come to me acting like you think that I need you. You got to know that you need me. For those who do not want, I don't want, I don't want a Jekyll and Hyde life like Uzziah had. I don't want to be elevated, abuse the elevation to be brought down. I want to think less of myself.